If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com, wistia.com at w-i-s-t-i-a.com, and Zoho Mail. We are recording on Blab today because Google Hangouts on air decided not to work for me. So, we're using Blab. And we have a guest watching the show, Paul from Austin, Texas. Hello, Paul. Well, I'm going to at the end of the show to say hello. And that's what I like about Blab. I like about hanging out on air so people can join in and chat and whatnot as well, but no one does. But Blab's is new and shiny object, and people tend to be on there and it's you say I'm on Blab and they come. So, so apparently totally Paul just wrote howdy from dot dot dot. I, he's from Austin, Texas, everybody. So from Austin, Texas. So anyhow, we want your help to make th- this show a reality more often. Maybe we can get this going weekly again. Um, if you can go to Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com slash Philly Tech Org, all one word. Patreon.com slash Philly Tech Org. Howard will put it in the chat. Already did. Already did. Oh, he's a, he, <laughs> ahead of me. Ah, oh, it's awesome. I'm on. I'm on it like a bum on a sandwich. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. <laughs> and then while we're while I'm thinking about it, let me make Howard a co-host. Can I do that? I, I'm a G. Yes, I made I've you made a co-host. co-host. You're very special. Yeah, I'm a co-host. Awesome. Very. I feel very special. Yes, and our sponsors for today's show are Wistia, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. And the links are in the show notes, which we will put up on the website, which has been redesigned. Um, still has some bugs, and it has this little banner that says Beta 2.0 on the site, because I was sick and tired of, of, of the way it works with Flywheel is that you that it stays your sites over here, and the, the pr- production sites over here. And so I wanted to make, you know, I, I'd update in, in the latest episode of the interview show, Nutrition Philly or SMA, and, well, it wouldn't update the staging site. So I decided, all right, push it live, and, you know, and we'll, do, we'll, make, we'll do our adjustments, you know, in, the, in real time. So, Speaking of Flywheel... Yes. I, I think we should take this little quick moment to thank all of our sponsors, which are Wistia, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. And we're going to talk a bit more about them once we are into the show proper. So show let proper. us kick things off. Seth, tell us about story number one. Story number one. There, so most people have, have heard of WhatsApp. I think they, Facebook spent billions on the purchase of WhatsApp. Yes. Essentially, it's a messaging app. It's Messenger. A messenger, essentially. Uh, it's used mostly outside the U.S. a lot for communication because SMS really is expensive else out there. Yes. But WhatsApp supposedly charged ninety nine cents a year after the first year. Never did for me. Never did for a lot of people. A lot of people were on it for forty four and forty years. Yeah, forty years. Yeah, uh, four years. And the one woman on Android Police said she was never charged. She always just extended it. So, anyhow. Whether or not that ninety nine cent you know charge for using the service existed ever really for anybody, it's not there anymore. Which I think goes to show them when that you've got the billions of dollars of Facebook behind them, and you're now the product essentially. I mean, they're not going to advertise to you, but Facebook sees the value in it, which is not a bad thing. And there's no reason to charge ninety nine cents when you're owned by Facebook, in my opinion. Well, I've got two thoughts on this. My first thought on this is, uh, how should I put it? It's a shame that they're taking kind of the same strategy with WhatsApp as they are with Messenger because they're two very similar products. And they could actually say, you know what? One of these paths is going to work better than the other. 
So, but it looks like what they're going to be doing is going to brands and saying, if you want to talk to your customers, then you're going to be what's going to fund this. The customers will get to use this like crazy, but if you want access to this customer using this communications platform, you'll have to pay to get in that. I think that's a great idea. And maybe they agree that it's such a great idea and they have such great data that they're saying, yep, we're all in on both fronts. But if they were still trying to evaluate whether or not this was going to work, this would have been a unique time to kind of diverge those two products. So that's mm -hmm. kind of my, um, I'll call it my one sort of first thought. My second thought, actually, I think about it this way. If email marketing cost a penny to send out an email to potential customers, well, four cents, might, on, four cents on Amazon, by the way, four cents. Right. The idea is if, if email had cost so that when we send email to each other, no cost. But if we wanted to send email in mass, if we want to send more than one at a time, Never then, you know, there is a cost to that. And, and if that cost was sort of there, the same kind of business model, maybe email marketing would do two things. It might get used a lot more sparingly and it might become more effective because there's a little bit of a, we'll get rid of all the random junk because people don't want to spend money on random junk. They want to make it more personalized and more targeted. So there's, there's a little bit of a, this business model very much resonates with me. So I'm, I'm actually really in favor of what they're doing and I think it's going to be very positive. Um, do you use it? Which WhatsApp? Yeah. No, I have no use for it because it's, it, um, my family is all here. We all have cheap texting platforms, so we don't need this platform. And there's also work. Facebook messenger. And, you're and there's Facebook. also Facebook. And I, so, I get it was a good buy because it's more strategic for Facebook yep. to buy before Google bought it, which I think it would make more sense for Google to have it because Google Hangouts is, as you know, we're on Blab for a reason. Yep, we're, we're on, on Blab, Blab today. So, you know, but I think it's more strategic buy, but WhatsApp is huge in Europe where, you know, it it's really the, is. United, the European states of, you know, the, the United States of Europe over there, you know, the Eurozone. But texting Germany costs a fortune. Really? And, it's, it's 140 characters. Why does it cost a fortune? It shouldn't cost anything. Well, again, these are the different, different business yeah. models. And um, something like texting, you know, there are so many different choices for carriers and options and things like that over in Europe and different parts of the world. There isn't this uh, sort of duopoly that we have here where we've got Verizon and we've got AT&T. And then Sprint and T-Mobile are kind of... Yeah catching on and stuff like that. But effectively, both of the major carriers, all the major characters, texting is free. Um, you have a plan, texting is included. Calls um, are included now, there's the, no minutes. It's, it's calls are included, now. there's no, yeah. There's, yeah, it's basically how much data are you using, which is, you know, a good sign. But what that, what that means is we don't have a need to get a service like Blab. Something like Facebook Messenger, Blab, like the advantage Blab. for us is, not Blab, excuse me, like WhatsApp. Um, Blab, we we don't, we don't, I know we're all. It's it's very 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 um, for that early one. late. Thank you. Um, the thing about uh, we don't have a use for WhatsApp because our networks are already on Facebook. So Facebook Messenger is a much is a much more <laughs> easy transition. Um, so my question is down the road: Will Facebook and WhatsApp kind of merge themselves? Oh, okay. So that Messenger and WhatsApp are effectively the same. And maybe that's the reason they're taking this single strategy is they're basically saying, look, they're the same product. They're not yet, but they're going to be converging in, you know, 18 months, two years, five also, years. Whatever. You know, with Messenger, you don't have to have a Facebook account to use Messenger either. So it really yeah. is. It really is a duplication of services because you don't, you don't have yep. to have Facebook. You can stay sort of out of it. But, you know, um, Google, speaking of um, working on markets and being specific to markets, Google built a special yes. version of YouTube for Pakistan, so it could get, so it can get in there after a three-year ban. Now, Pakistan is an right. interesting country. You know, it's it's in the Islamic center center of the world, and you know, there's different sensibilities over there, and nothing wrong with that. You know, but it, it's, it's interesting to see that Google went ahead and built a special YouTube because now it opens up a can of worms. Well, they do that for everybody now, and then we'll have this we, these weird silos of like, well, it's not on this, it's not on this YouTube, it's on that YouTube, it's, it's on the Pakistan Pakistani YouTube, it's on the Indian YouTube, and will there be some cross? You know, people post on the Pakistani YouTube, will it show up on YouTube main or will it not? You know, 
And then what what constitutes getting into the Pakistani YouTube? See? You're back. Yeah, you're back. You know, I just didn't stop talking. Am I back? Can you hear me? Did I freeze? Okay. I thought I froze for a second. Thanks. No, the, um, the thing that's interesting about this is they've got um, – censorship is an issue. So Google had to balance the following. Is it worth it to do business or to not – or to basically say we're not going to censor everything? And clearly what they said was it is worth it to do business. And setting this precedent of we will set up a separate private YouTube for, you know, it'll effectively be the same database, but we'll let the governments block things. So some links will be available and some won't. Um, I look at it this way. There, Google is not a government. Google is not a political movement. Google is a company that's job is to make money. So if it's in their best interest to make money by setting this up, then I got to let them go for it. Uh, it's not going to make me not want to use Google. Um, and I'll tell you, people who want to get to content know how to get to content. They know how to get around this, whether it's through proxy servers or different things like that. So what this really does is it says, I will enable ourselves, as in, hi, I'm Mr. Google, and I'm enabling ourselves to do business in more countries. So when someone says, we want to censor your data, they'll say, sure, go ahead, censor our data. We'll have a separate thing. You tell us what not to put up there, and here's your version of YouTube. And I mean, that's I, I what we serve think, to people you know, who are that, in that location. You know, the United States with the, you know, you so, know the non-censorship we have here, you know, you know, we think, oh, my God, they're censoring. It's a different mentality over there. It's a different thought process. It's a different, you know, coming. they've, they've come from different places right. than us. They didn't have a revolution necessarily. Or their revolution was different from ours. So censorship to them is different. It's a way of life. It is what it is. We may not agree with it, but that's the way it is. And if you want to do business there, you kind of got to do about what the comp what the country wants you to do. Yeah. So VPN out and use the regular YouTube, honestly. Yeah. I look at it this way. They, um, right. they have to comply with the laws of our country in terms of legal, in terms of data retention, in terms of all different kinds of things. So... There's no reason that they shouldn't have to comply with laws of other countries. And look, does that mean they have to do special programming? Absolutely. We have to do special programming for tax for sales taxes based on you know, if we Power. sell to certain Turn countries or certain sales states tax. and what kind of product it is. There's all these different calculations we have to do. Yes. Correct. So there's all kinds of weirdness. And you know, and you we, know, we accommodate it. We make sure that we that handle region. that. And that's you know, whether we like it or not. Correct. So it's it's pretty simple. It's it, it, they're opening their market. So I'm kind of behind that. So yeah, speaking of Howard opening markets, more than that guy. what about I'm, the I'm next story, which is very but interesting? Allegedly, Apple will get rid of the headphone jack on the next iPhone. You don't think so, Howard? You get Bluetooth headphones. I, it's not I, the end of the world. It's not like, oh my so. God, and we can't listen to stuff this in our is ears. one of those things that. Um, Right, but here's the thing. As at the um, bottom, which is weird. See this little tiny, tiny hole at the bottom there? See that little tiny hole? Yeah. Well, it used to be at the top, and they moved it, and frankly, I don't really care because I just plug in the headphones to wherever it goes. It's fine. Um, the thing about that little tiny hole is the technology that is in there, even though there's an extra pin so that they can do the little thing to forward and back and stop things and adjust the volume and, and the, the other connection, the audio that's coming from there is effectively the exact same cable that we've been looking at since, I don't even want to know what the start date is, but it's been as long as I've been alive. It's been greater than 40 some years that a small audio cable, now it was not a quarter inch cable and it got shrunk to an eighth inch cable. Um, that's something where getting rid of that, it's so easy. It's so simple. Um, it's one of those things where the technology is so very simple that, you know, I don't want to say there isn't a reason to get rid of it, but until they offer something that is significantly um, better, easier for everybody to work with, it's a simple way to kind of, I don't want to say get into the phone, but the cheapest pair of headphones works 
on an iPhone or an iPod One because of a very simple piece of technology that everybody is standardized on. Taking it out, right, taking it out presents two problems. Um, aside from the fact that now you would have to have some kind of adapter for a traditional set of headphones. So these are studio headphones. So if I wanted to plug these into the phone, I would need an adapter. Now, the problem there is there is only one lightning port on the bottom here. So imagine that what I wanted to do was listen to headphones while I charged my phone. So I'm sitting in bed, the phone is sitting on the nightstand, and I'm listening on headphones, and it's any pair of headphones, and I'm charging the phone. In order to do that, I need a lightning adapter for headphones, a lightning splitter, and a charger. So not elegant. So unless they start coming up with um, the, the problem is they did that, but they did that in the Mac Pro. Uh, they got, they, they got rid of all the ports, but one experience? Um, USB C. Correct, and that is a different device. So I believe that Apple would say yes. Um, we would like to do this. Yeah. If they're going to keep a lightning port at the bottom, I don't think they're going to get rid of a headphone jack. I would see them saying, you know what? We're going to switch over to USB-C. We're going to go to that standard. Um, and then we don't have to worry about all this other stuff. Mm. But the big thing to remember is Apple owns this company called Beats. Well, they're known and Beats, really. in spite of the fact yeah. that they have the music service, they also have these other things called headphones. So if Apple started, which they're known for, so if Apple started saying, we're going to include wireless Bluetooth headphones, as a inexpensive, good sounding option that we can put in with every iPhone, that's going to, well, I don't and think we have to complain, include it, honestly. but that's going to increase their cost for the overall product. My question How is this, thinner. It already bends. That some people have said, well, Apple wants to make the device thinner, so they're going to take out that thing. Right. Well, regardless of that, that thing is not the limiting thin factor right now. The limiting thin, thin factor is actually the camera optics inside. So unless they can figure out a way to make powered. the camera optics so smaller, I mean, there's already the little bump on here that's raised. Unless exactly, that's my point. It's yes. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's nothing. Thinner. It can't get any thinner. It's nothing. All right, if you get big there, enough, you can bend it. Yeah. Right. So, mm-hmm. right. So my argument would be this. Anyone who says, well, Apple wants to make the phone thinner, they they're so, they yeah. they have a they have a different problem that's harder to solve than saying you have to have Bluetooth for your headphones. So that's number one. If the second thing is, well, we want to get rid of ports. Well, the interesting yeah. thing is Apple only gets rid of ports on machines because there is a compelling reason to do that. So on the MacBook, the reason to only go with one port that handled charging or whatever was they found that in the most portable situations that are in the low end, remember this is the MacBook, not the MacBook Pro, those users didn't plug anything in, ever. Nothing, like the only thing they would plug in is a power cable, and even then they typically ran off batteries and then just charged it overnight. So the fact that there is a port is because they needed some way to get something in there. That's very different. An iPhone, you have to charge every day. There is no, like, there is no multiple days on battery life. So you're always charging it. Your iPhone plugs into mm-hmm. lots of things like cars and, and whatever and different cars and you know whether you're using a audio cable or some kind of proprietary thing with the lightning, you're you're doing something to connect it. It's not a port that needs to yeah. go away. It's not and something that's an interesting story. And users are going, man, we want to get rid of this we'll, thing, it's a pain in the neck. We are hearing about it and we will continue to hear about it until it's not a rumor anymore. Either way, you know on social media, so. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and Apple is notorious for doing this thing with their products. They test stuff. That means there is probably it's a prototype that does not have a headphone jack on it. Why? Because it's a prototype that doesn't have a headphone jack on it. They decided that it's a prototype. Right. And so they might do these builds that just simply only have certain components. In. Can we, we know we can fit this, and we know we can fit this, but we're trying to do this thing. What does that look like? Um, again, these and limited small run prototypes are designed for them to try things out. Um, 
And I would bet, well, and I would also bet that um, they, this is going to sound strange, I would bet that they purposely leak things or they purposely have things that are um, trackable so they can tell where the leaks are. So if they send something to a manufacturer mm -hmm. and all of a sudden that shows up Moving on the internet, along, they'll say, well, the supplier, that's a supplier, the we, supplier can't trust. we can trust and we love is Wistia. So, Howard, moving how's right Wistia? along. Yes. Well, Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. And we use it here at phillytech.org because it is much more professional than YouTube. And the data that Wistia provides, it's going to help us understand really exactly how our content is being consumed. Also, Wistia has a ton of free resources on their site to help us to get started with video. For example, the way I'm lit. Don't I look quite like evenly lit, but there's still some shape? It's not just like I'm blown out? Well, why is that? That's because there's a little bounce thing over there. That's my whiteboard actually is doing that. And my light is being shown from here, bouncing into there, filling in here, so it gives a nice natural look. There, perfect. Who cares what it looks like? I really am this this pale. It's kind of scary. Um, Those are free. Anyway, their tutorials help you with lighting, with editing, choosing the right microphone, and it's a great community. And those are free. They're just there. So you also can use their service. It can hold up to 25 videos for free. So go check them out. Click on the link in our show notes, and hopefully uh, Seth is pasting that up into the Blab chat as we go. Um, great resources that are uh, great learning resources, uh, great support team, really, really great. We can't recommend them as highly enough, and we also thank them Social for sponsoring apps. the social huh. media. Anyhow, plant what we are social media, which is, you know, literally plant Facebook. Yes. Like, what, 2 billion right. people, 1 billion people on Facebook? 87. Yeah, eighty-seven percent of world governments are now on the social network. There be a lot of, of people. those people. What a surprise! Obama is the most most liked leader. But like, okay, crickets, 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 crickets. Okay, good, good to know. I thought it was an interesting fact. The way eighty-seven percent of world governments are on social on the yeah. on social, the social network, and they're also on Twitter. They're also on all over the place. I mean, the White House is on Snapchat. And it's actually quite entertaining yep. to watch. Well, and it's the thing that uh, I really, really uh, am glad to see, especially as more mm -hmm. governments are embracing this, is, you know, governments should go where the people are. And it's not that they're there to control things, but if people are having conversations and the governments want to be involved, well, you can either put up a website that says, this is where we're talking and all the people will go wherever they want to go. Or you go where the people are and you participate. Now, it's a risk because when you participate on Facebook, well, let's say, for example, Obama has a certain number of followers or a leader from a, another country has a certain number of followers and Justin Bieber has more. So is Justin well, Bieber more Bieber influential than Obama? Well, from a number of things, there is a lot so sure. to be said about that. Right. That's kind of scary. I would actually say in, in this country, maybe, you know. And that's the point. We'll the idea is if they're. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, All right, we're moving along. Google uh, yeah, Google's we'll, we'll, testing we'll what's high and what's alone. nearby as an what's Android up? search option. Moving along. Which is kind of neat. You can say what, what's nearby. So that, let's say I've, you go to a conference and you're not really sure yeah. what's nearby. You can search what's nearby. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. Also, what's high? Like, what's the, what's the high area to go to? It, it, it's another one of those really quick right. hit stories that we can say that that's the story. I thought it was, it's just an interesting thing that you can, it's becoming more language-based. Yep. It understands what's hot. And Google, now you can say what's hot. And it'll kind of geolocate it, hopefully. Didn't quite work for me last time I checked it, but, you know, what's nearby does work. So. Yeah. And, you know, and this really ties into the story right exactly. after that, which is how people start local searches. And that is, yeah. you know, less than 40% of people 
start their local search with a search engine. Now, it by far is the most used version. There's lots of fragments in different ways, but understand that when people think about local search, it's not just, hey, I'm gonna go to Google and search. People will, you know, they'll look at reviews, whether it's local reviews, they'll look at maps, they'll look at stuff on their phone, they'll, you know, look at the social recommendations. They're all different things that people are using. So as these products sort of evolve, I actually really feel like what we're going to see is the Google Now, the Android, uh, the uh, Amazon Alexa, the Siri, those options being the real front door for local search because they're all able to take advantage of search engines as well as reviews, as well as uh, friends' favorites. They're tying those things in and um, I kind of feel like that's gonna be a, um, a real significant way that people uh, sort of embrace this local search, that they're going to start using those, uh, basically a smartphone voice Absolutely. search will be a you know, local we're also where we're heading with like that's kind of we'll uh, where we're headed at the with beginning, that. that's where we're hosted. But let's talk a little bit more about who they are and what they do and why we love them. Yes. Well, Flywheel, what are they? I know what they are. They're a managed WordPress hosting platform. And what makes them so special and so awesome? Well, it's because they built it specifically for designers and creative agencies. So what Flywheel does is it makes it really simple Amazing. for you to build, launch, and manage client sites with their easy to use dashboard that they built. It is specifically for WordPress. So what that means is WordPress backups, that's how it's, backups are designed to back up WordPress. Um, load times are designed to support WordPress. Security is designed to support the WordPress. Trends here, isn't and there? also, their support team is filled <laughs> with people who know WordPress. So with other hosting companies, there is a trend here. Other hosting companies, if you call them and say, I'm having an issue with my site, and they say, oh, um, what's going, what are you doing? And you say, well, it's WordPress. Okay, and the first thing they say is, why don't you disable all of your plugins? And it's like, um, no, that's not it. It's not, um, I don't have to disable all of my plugins. I can clearly see that I need more memory. Could you please adjust the memory in PHP that I can't access? Oh no, that's not a situation. Well, with Flywheel, they no. know WordPress. So they might look at it and say, you know what, this particular plugin, we're seeing issues with that a lot. So don't update it because the update is where those issues came in. So roll back to a previous version because they understand WordPress, they can support it. That's something where they help you as a WordPress professional, not just as, you know, hey, here's this hosting account. So what we want you to do, and I'm sure that Seth has posted it in the, oh, he did, it's over there in the little chat. There's already a little thing, well, it's over there, or it's over, uh, it depends on where you're pointing. For me, I'm pointing over there, whatever. Anyway, um, it is, uh, go to the link. That lets them know that we awesome. sent you and, and give Flywheel a shot. They're uh, certainly phone. worth it. Talk about that another not another day. But anyhow, Apple announces it will discontinue iAd app network for developers on on June thirtieth. Tell me a little bit more about this since this is more in your ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, here's what's interesting. When when Apple came out with iAds. Um, there were a lot of people that were like, wow, these are going to be really beautiful ads and we're going to make it really easy to integrate with tools. Um, but it's Apple's controlled network. And then, frankly, what I looked at was these are really beautiful ads. That's a lot of work to make these ads. And most ads that you see are like a graphic that links to a thing or an existing video that plays mm -hmm. because it's a, you know, it's something that's a, whether it's pre-roll or it's something inside of a game that's like to continue, you have to watch this video. iAds were a lot of effort to make. And so you have a couple problems. You have to be, this is for iOS only. So if you're advertising on all platforms, that means you need something separate for Android or for Windows Phone, where all the other ad networks were basically like, look, we'll show your ads wherever. We, you know, our job is to show your ads. So from the people who were making ads versus the developers that were implementing ads, you, it kind of like got out of the gate with a limp and uh, Frank and a stumble. And you know what? You just haven't seen people using it. So de what developers looked at was said, okay, well, there's not a lot of advertisers on it. So if I build into, if I build iAds into my platform, mm -hmm. then okay, there's not a lot of advertisers. I'm not seeing a lot of revenue from that. Whereas if I'm on these other ad networks, I see a ton of revenue and there's a ton of ad inventory and, you know, I can show lots of ads. I can show ads from Good Morning America. I mean, when 
the first I ads that came out were for the Nissan Leaf, and it was a beautiful ad. And it was like, wow, I really want to integrate. I want to have fun with this ad. I want to click on things and look through stuff and get this whole experience. That was awesome. And then what people realized is if you want to advertise the latest new update to Candy Crush, um, really they don't want to work that hard. There was like really a graphic and a bang graphic thing. That, so yeah. iAds didn't really answer a problem. This is, this is yes. supporting the app. Yeah. Click here if you want to see it. If not, you know, click X to keep on going. You know, it's just like, like the idea of having a, that big of an interstitial yeah. is almost disturbing. To, it, it takes you out of the um, the willful suspension yeah. of disbelief, to use a phone term. You know, you're saying that you're, you're like mid jump and say, this, this jump was brought to you by the Nissan Leaf. Yeah. yeah! Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I just don't think they were solving a problem that people had. So, you know, again, there's certain problems that companies can solve because it's an existing problem. And Apple uniquely solves problems in a very specific way that appeals to many people. So I and I, I have to tell you, I'm an Apple customer. I used to be a Windows customer and now I'm an Apple customer. Apple solves problems for me that Windows doesn't solve for me the way I want them to solve. So I stay with it. The moment Apple doesn't solve those problems the way that I want, like for example, if they took the headphone jack off of, like if they said, hey, the next phone doesn't have a headphone jack, well, I probably won't upgrade. Why? Because I don't want to buy new headphones. I have a really nice set of headphones. Oh, wow. They're uh, they're uh, super low. They're super high fidelity. They have custom ear molds. Uh, if I have can. really nice headphones. I don't want to have to buy new ones of those. Or if I can, or I don't want to have to buy what will probably be a $30 lightning to audio adapter and then another $30 lightning to lightning splitter so you can charge and listen to audio at the same time. Right. I don't want to spend $60 so I can use my existing headphones. What I'll say is, look, this phone's working great, so I'll skip this version, and hopefully in a year's time, they'll have they'll figure it out. Now, Will they eventually get all of these things um, to wireless? Frankly, I think Apple will do wireless, wireless charging, charging before they get rid of an audio charging. port. So sort of to circle back to that. I under Right. It makes your it's phone thicker. Much thicker. And that's one of the things where um, wireless charging is not... No, it sucks. Um, no, I put my phone in. My, I have quick charge. It's not that much thicker, Literally, but it's also not in. that like, much faster. Where am I at right now? So... Well, I'm a little low on battery. I'll plug this in. I'll be like zero, and then half an hour, it's like fully charged. Mm -hmm. it's like, holy crap, that was fast. Right. Right. I would sooner see manufacturers go with um, uh, zero to 80% as a rapid charge. It was nice to have when, you're, when your USB then, port dies on you. Than a wireless charging. Which happens. So those kinds of things. It's good to have. Yeah. Well, I don't know why a USB port would die because I've had iPhones since the first one, Seven. and I've never had a, a, a whether it was a dock connector or this. They do, you know. Android is better, but oh, no, ports die on those Android phones, now. don't they? We'll do stop at that. It's almost, 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 almost like yeah. a political debate right there. So, anyhow, well, if <laughs> anyhow, if, friends, if Android you is better the because website, it's wonkier than enjoy that. <laughs> What the hell is that? Oh, pour some out. Pour some out for Friends United. Okay, so this is like, this is Friends United. This is one of those things where the concept of a social network was not a Facebook thing. It was I've a never heard of this service. Thing, but actually it wasn't even industry. a Friendster thing. It was a before that thing. And yeah, well, the funny thing is I did hear of this service and it was just lame. It, it well, really was an old person's com. way of saying, who did I know from high school or college? Is that still around? It was classmates.com. And that's, and that again, that's sort of, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's barely breathing, but it's there. Um, it's just something where um, the collection kind of, of people is not what's interesting on social networks. It's the communication between your collections of people. So... The concept of here are all the people and here are all the people who I went to high school with. That's great. Well, and how often are we going to look at that? High school like posting. never. What are they sharing? Oh, so, they're cute kids. Okay. Oh, they have that, that, that kid. Gosh, that 
that student actually had had found a wife to marry him? Really? Like, holy, someone actually married him? You know, that kind of thing. Yep. Whoa, that person got fat. That kind of thing. It's... Bye-bye. Yep, exactly. So, See, it's... So remember no, pay phones? Cute. See you later. There's anyway. actually one in Central Park in Doyle's Town. Pay phones. What are those? There's are those actually things where you, like, walk up to it and there's this, like... No, there's actually a satellite dish. Do, do they like it. put in a, a phone, a like a like a little dock in there, so you put your phone in it? There is like this used to be. I remember when I was teaching. Jeez, I thought there might be like a cup with a string. I would call my mom on a calling card on the payphone across the street. Remember that? <laughs> it's um, well, it, it, it I oh I I remember payphones in the tri- like I I remember doing things like um calling my parents. And I'm because I didn't have any money on me, it would be collect call from, and then I would, I'm alive, <laughs> and they would know. <laughs> I'll be home in 30 minutes, like whatever it was. <laughs> Just something to say, hi, I'm here. Don't I know, take I'm the like, call. Eh. It's almost <laughs> like, it's almost like the Snapchat of back then. <laughs> like you had 10 seconds to get your message out. Yeah. It's just in New York City. Yeah. Exactly. So now... And this is very interesting. Out there. There, there's, this is in New York City. So there's two, there's two uses for these kiosks, essentially. You know, pieces of land that have a thing on it. So one of them is to turn it into a free Wi-Fi hotspot, a little mini which I think is actually pretty brilliant. A little mini in the city office center that you can, you know, a little mini in the city or office the center. You can say, well, I want to check email or do whatever, and I need. Internet, you know, I'll, or it could stuff be that we're not a place mention. where it's like a little booth where you can I'm address that. I was wondering if you actually order stuff that we're not going to mention. And have a little here's yourself. what's interesting. Oh yeah. Oh no. I, I looked at this article. I looked at this article and I said, I need to include this one because that, there are two the awkward uses of it. Um, frankly, I think a little, a small, uh, it's something, uh, but the concept of Gaifi, um, which I thought was a very great, great name. Um, but the idea of a hey, here's a small little booth that you can go surf whatever you want you during the day. It, it's not um, there's really issues of public masturbation that I'm it's, sure you know they have to deal with. But it's not like an old-fashioned booth where you can actually kind of whip it out and you know. It's you know, a it kiosk, there. and you know what. Oh, we have to follow a sponsor after this. We'll, we'll absolutely <laughs> leave it there. As far as I'm concerned, the best use of these... Oh, we do. Um, the, for me, the best use and of these spots. old uh, phone booths is small, mini-in-the-city Wi-Fi hotspots. Yes, you could literally. You go in there, <clears throat> kind of like you would park your car. You could dock your phone and Every check email charge. and do whatever. And while you're in it for 10 minutes, it powers your phone on a rapid charge. You're getting internet. Um, the idea being, here is a place that you can quickly connect, get to what you need, and then move about. The same way, you know, people walk around the streets no, in New York City. They for go it, to lunch, honestly, they, they eat hot dogs know, on the street, whatever it is. What is you know, this is a great anymore. way. Like a payphone. Right. Well, frankly, you would use something like Android Pay or Apple Pay or one of these contact remember, remember, you remember, wifi, phone, remember bing, Wi-Fi cafes? You're there. It connects you. You're all good to go. Or on um, computer, like, yep. Uh, they had one in Princeton. They used to have games mm-hmm. on it and a little timer at the bottom. Absolutely. Or Verizon. Yeah. I, I think Comcast, Comcast should be all buying these up. Not that I'm anywhere. a big fan of Comcast, but with what? Right, but the idea is if they were to buy a small percentage of these, it would really extend that, that, that Xfinity free Wi Fi that you know, Comcast customers get to enjoy. That's it was kind of started. When I was on fire, I like, used my mom's code. I was like, Mom, can I have your password? Yep. Exactly. Oh, it was password. Exactly. Oh, my mom. Yeah. What Love password? You, mom. Yeah. Or yeah, in the, the ones, wait, in the it one, may have been very no, secure. It may have been yeah. password one two three. Yeah, exactly. I was trying to be clever with it. Yeah. So anyhow, no, just password so anyhow, one two three. Check That's, out our next sponsor. Yes. The link is in the is Don't in get the more chat over there. And 
It is. It is Zoho Mail, and we want to thank Zoho Mail because Zoho Mail helps us. Why? They help us because they give us professional email that's designed for business, that has business features, business class security, as well as the convenience of web interfaces and mobile interfaces. Yeah. So what I want you to do is learn more about Zoho Mail from the link that Seth probably just posted over in the chat on Blab, and then sign up for a free ad-free account for up to 10 users. And uh, by clicking on that link, it gives you a shot for free ad free. That means if you have a awesome, small business, great. let's say it's, five people, you I can use Zoho Mail for, for free. Tech. Isn't that awesome? So, anyhow, picks of the week. Um, a local startup here called IntroNet. Picks. Of it's essentially the week. a way to introduce people to each other, which I'm still kind of pondering why can't what is use it now. But it's a neat little service. It's now on Android and iOS. The links are in the show notes. I'm not going to put them in the chat. They go to intronet.com. Excellent. Intranet. No, it's secure.intro.net. Put the link in the chat. Clever. I will copy that in the chat right now. It's neat. Mike Krupit from um, you know, uh, Novatorium fame, and he's a local CD Now. He was the CEO of CD Now back in the day. This is his baby, and check it out. It's free. So, And Howard, you have one of my favorite um, plugins. Okay, if you develop WordPress, you will have to do forms at some point. So works, people will search for forms, and maybe they use that free contact form seven thing, which is, um, I look at it this way. Um, for, if you want effectively kind of low tech crappy forms that are unreliable, contact form seven is perfect. But if you want, but if you want forms that are, I'll call them business class forms, then you want to use gravity forms. And gravity forms, is it's incredible. First of all, if all you need is just simple basic forms, it's a forty dollar plugin for the basic it's gravity for three forms. sites. It is fabulous. For forty bucks, you're golden. Now I have yearly and that's for yearly. three sites. I have the developer year, version, which is for oh, as many sites yeah, as I want. I so I can all my clients here. Yes. For that right. For that two hundred dollars, the kinds of things you can do with gravity forms are incredible. Okay, so first of all Conditional logic. This is something that in your forms you can absolutely do as part of gravity forms. That means if someone picks a checkbox, you can then show other data. Like you can do something. with yeah. some of the uh, developer uh, add-ons. You can do everything from integrating with services like MailChimp, Mad Mimi. Um, you can integrate with FreshBooks. So you can have someone fill out a form for a service and that'll automatically generate an invoice in FreshBooks. You can integrate it with different payment solutions. You can have coupon codes. You can do polls. You can do surveys. You can do signatures on we your website this. using Gravity Forms. It is ridiculous what you can do with this plugin. I've actually, I've actually designed applications where a customer would come to me and say, we want to have people go on our website and do X, Y, and Z. I, use, I build the whole thing in gravity forms. I use the conditional logic. I use different you know, settings. Next thing we know, it's all it's like an application. And what the, your website is doing is it's presenting a front layer, and gravity forms is assembling all that data. It is ridiculous what you can do with it. Um, I've, uh, I've, I've avoided more programming projects where all the customer wanted was input, and then they would get all their data in a CSV file, and they would look get it in Excel and import it to whatever. They just wanted an input system on their website. And here's what's great about it. Gravity Forms generates whatever email messages you want. That means if, mm -hmm. if someone picks one checkbox, you can send it to one person. If someone picks another checkbox, you send it to a different person. You can send it to lots of people. If it was just sending email messages, I would go, you know what, it's just sending email. It stores everything in a database on the site. That means that if there was ever any quote lost email or something didn't work from an email standpoint, so all of that data is used stored flywheel, on your it will site. Happen. So you're never lost with it. So I, right. So I love Gravity Forms. I just dropped my little link there in the show notes. Uh, there's my little shortened link. Um, Gravity Forms is awesome. You should absolutely check out Gravity Forms. I love Gravity Forms. I've been a customer of Gra I remember when Carl Hancock, the, the, the lead guy who made Gravity Forms, had like no customers. I remember Gravity Forms 1.0 finding you knew it, this is really cool, and buying it. And so I just, I knew him when, um, I still tweet with Great him a little bit back too. and forth every so often something comes up, and really, really great. I, I just can't speak highly enough of it. 
really great support. I have to say, every site that I build, it's literally like it's the first WordPress is yeah. installed, and then I activate Gravity Forms. It's 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 that it it's like the first thing that's there. And when I show clients how they can make their own forms, they kind of like, you know, at first they're like, oh, well, I, uh, how you know that doesn't look that hard. How and then I, and I don't I use too much for basic content for most on most sites. But, you know, awesome. it's worth yeah. it to me because it's so, like, boom, love Gravity boom, Forms. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, technical terms. Drag and drop, and and new releases of Gravity Forms. Now they have massive phone it's, it's numbers. Own They've got all kinds amazing. of great stuff. It's we want to hear from you. Email <laughs> us, please email us info at phillytech.org. Yeah. Tweet us at phillytech underscore org, or call us. We'd love a call because I I have then would have to figure out how to make it appear in the in the show. So that that's probably that's probably a Howard thing. Howard would probably handle that. So that's nine zero eight seven five eight. 3248. That's 908-758-3248. I think that's a North Jersey number. I don't know. It's somewhere in there if you figure that out. That's awesome. I don't know about the word, voicemail. Um, we'll play I on the show. Uh, we love it. In there. Actually, Paul, that's the, Paul, yes. you're there. Why don't you send us a voicemail and we'll play on the show next time. <laughs> so anyhow, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in two weeks for another wonderful episode of the Social Media Addicts Podcast. And maybe it'll be maybe it'll still be a little cold outside. Probably. It's cold. It's cold. <sighs> oh, it's cold. It's very cold. So so